What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Gamer Boys. I'm your host, Colonel and Dad, Garrett Morling. And here in the virtual studio with me is the king of video games and still resident superstar, Adrian You do sound Holmes. a little more enthused about it. Good grief. <laughs> I just, I just want to beat you. I just want to beat you once at something. It just drives me crazy that you're so good at video games. Um, they don't call like, me the king for nothing. Mario Golf, you destroyed me. Mario Party, you destroyed me. Mario Kart. Mario Kart was one of those that I, honestly, I thought I was pretty dang good. I For a long time, I'm like, I am, I'm the king of Mario <laughs> Kart. And then I played against you. I'm like, I am, it's like a five-year-old. It's like me <laughs> when I raced my five-year-old son. That was me versus Adrian. Adrian yeah, I was like, oh, I, yeah. I was, I was Shepard and you were me in the situation. You, you did and pretty you, good, bud. You had a good race. I, 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 it just blew my mind. I, I was like, I, this isn't, this isn't humanly possible. He's using cheat codes. He has to be. And I'm like, no, he can't be because we're sitting. It was when you can't, you were down here in San Diego. Right. I was like, I was he's like, sitting I, next to me. He's not it, cheating. There's, there's no, no way. He's not, he's not using a controller with like turbo button on it or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yes, you are our king of video games and resident superstar here at Super Gamer Boys. Um, it's good and, to be here with you tonight, sir. Yeah, thanks for thanks and for just actually you showing again. up. Thanks, thanks for actually caring about this show and actually showing up because yeah. once again, uh, the the so called heavyweight podcasting champion of the world. I don't, so okay. So here is the thing: he holds that title, but it's because no one can ever challenge him I to take it away because it. he doesn't. I, come I feel like it's kind of like it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's like someone like winning, you know, heavyweight, you know, championship with say i don't know ufc or something and then being like yep and i'm done fighting i'm taking it home and no one else can have it it's like wait a second like that no, see when you that's when not you do that, like that's you vacate the title that's what happens yeah so, so does that mean we have to take that title away from him now do we get to duke it out as the heavyweight podcasting champion i <laughs> guess <laughs> all right i now now you know what i'd rather him have it than you have another title because that's what's gonna you happen take it. You, <laughs> no because we have there has to be there has to be a a competition of some sort. I can't just take the heavyweight podcasting champion Look, of the world. I got too many belts or already, I, okay? Or, or I got a lot time. of belts on these here shoulders. <laughs> you could take heavyweight <laughs> podcasting champion. I'm fine with that. The next time live. we the next time we do a show, I, I when I introduce myself at the beginning, I should just like throw it on there and see what J, uh, JJ's should. face. You his should. jaw drop, be like, wait, wait, what? Wait, what? I thought that was me. Like, because I could totally see him too, like getting all like, "Oh, he's introducing me first, yeah." And then like when he hears Garrett Moore, like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and and then you can just do the regular one for him and JJ Purdom. That's it. He doesn't even get a title. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we and the only reason we can talk about those plans here live on the show is because he also definitely does not watch the show. That's for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not only is he not willing to show up, but he's like, "I'm not even gonna bother to catch up." Uh, you know what? I, I don't blame him. He's a busy man fighting the, 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 the winter, the wild, wild winter of Nebraska. Uh, he was Old like, "This winter. is the worst, the worst snowstorm we've we've had." Because he went through one winter last year, and he's like, "It's worse than anything we got last year." Like, oh, welcome, welcome to the Midwest. This I was is like, what you want it? You you don't cry it. to me. Yeah, don't cry to me because I lived in Wisconsin for uh, five years, and uh, I was like. We got a lot of snow. It got down to negative forty. Like, don't don't complain to me. I <laughs> I miss the snow. Actually, I don't miss the cold. I was I was telling him, I was like, great, send it my way. I miss the snow. I want to go see some snow. <laughs> you say that now, but I feel like you give it more than a couple of days, and you'll be over it. Oh yeah, no, it's nice to visit. Nice to visit, and then get out again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we are here bringing you another show another super gamer boys this week uh because we care we care about you the listener and we actually care about bringing you quality content um uh right at the top of the show before i forget because i did not write it down the show notes as i should have uh we will be taking a break for the next two weeks next winter week break. is w- yeah the start of winter break for super gamer boys uh which just means we get to sleep in every day drink hot cocoa play video games all day then just go to bed and do the same thing that's how it works right yeah, just like when we were kids on winter break. Yes. Uh, 
I wish that's how it worked. I know. <laughs> I wish. I wish I could just. I still got to go to work, but. Yeah. Hey. Still got to go to work. Still got to take care of two kids. Uh, but you know what? That's fine. That's great. It'll be fun season to kind of taking a break. So yeah, the next two weeks, because uh, next week is the day after Christmas. And the week after that is two days after New Year's. New Year's. But we'll still be recovering. It'll be a crazy New Year's Eve. I promise you. Adrian will have a crazy New Year's for the for makeup for me and JJ. Being Don't late. worry. I got a whole thing planned, dude. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to go over to Red. He's going to be in his little stall at my in my village on my island. He's going to be selling all those New Year's poppers. I'm going to get a couple of them. And as soon as New Year's hits, me and all my villagers are going to go crazy. We're going to pop those poppers off. And the sparklers are going to be sparkling, boy. It's going to be a wild New Year's Eve. Uh, now, are you? Uh, I I have not played enough Animal Crossing to know. Are you talking New Horizons? Or are you talking uh, the whatever the old one's called? New Horizons has the best today. New Year's Eve, so okay. I'll probably be okay. doing it on there. All right. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were going back to the the classic, the OG one that you enjoy so much. Just just because Shania, I can. I know. I know. I, you, I know I you didn't really like New Horizons as much, but but it it does the best rendition. Of, of New Year's Eve because they have like a big countdown and everything and, and granted that was in the older ones but like especially in the first ones you only ever see the reflection of of the fireworks in the water because they didn't really oh, have really? a skybox for it so this is kind of like on the next level it feels the most like complete right. of the renditions so yeah that makes sense. that's where you'll find me on my island that makes sense cool well Maybe maybe you can invite, give out your island code. Be like, hey, come join me on the island or yeah. private. No. Private. Not but allowed, people no will probably be at parties and stuff like that. That's usually why nobody ever, I don't, <laughs> I don't even bother. So I'll just spend I mean, it with my, with my, uh, my villagers. Your little villagers. All right. Well, so yeah. So take note of that. Next two weeks, no show. We'll be back next year. Uh, we're still, you're still going to get book club though. Even yep. though we will not doing show, uh, be doing a show this next week uh, for the regular podcast, this, sorry, next week, next Friday, uh, the 30th, you will be getting the Super Gamer Book Club. As long as the recording time that we set <laughs> happens as planned uh, on Wednesday. So uh, look So far, we that. are on schedule. Heck yeah. Um all right, today we're going to be talking about The Last of Us Part 3 rumors, Death Stranding, getting a movie, and Spider-Man 2 coming. Sorry, I did not update this since I changed the, show, the articles. We are not talking about Spider-Man 2. We're talking about new Blue Point teases. They showed off some gift boxes under a tree, and we're going to talk about that later. But first, let's give a quick shout out to our Patreon producers, Bumple Smash, Eddie Martin, and Kajoma01, and our Super Gamer sponsors, Julie Bates and Mama Mayor. If you want to be awesome just like those folks, head over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys. Support us over there starting at just a buck a month. Get episodes early and ad-free, such as this show and our Super Gamer Book Club, uh, hosted by Adrian this month's episode. Uh, at the beginning of this month, uh, we put up Legend of Zelda Link to the Past featuring Nintendo Cartridge Society. Uh, on the free feed, you can get our episode about 2064 read-only memories featuring Adrian and I. And then, like I mentioned earlier, upcoming next Friday, you will be getting Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, baby! Right. We finally oh. did it! We did it! Yes! I have I have completed Kingdom Hearts. We've been yes. talking about it. I, I made some, some jokes in the Discord that did not go over well. Uh, <laughs> I have my eye on you. <laughs> um, so we will be talking about that next Wednesday with KK Ryder and a possible another special guest. There might be four of us. Uh, I need to I need to confirm. He said that he would be on, but and he was I've playing. not given him. And he's playing the game currently, but I did not give him a date or time of when we're doing it. So if he's not available, he won't be on there. If he is available, there will be a fourth. Shout out to Angel with Underleveled. You know him. So Keep hopefully you can peeled. join us. That'd be sick. Yeah, look forward to that episode over on the Patreon. We'll talk more about Patreon later on the show. But right now, I want to give a shout out to Jack Sriracha and Yate for allowing us to use their music on our show. Very much appreciate that. And remember, you can support them by listening to their music 
uh, well, purchasing their music through iTunes and Bandcamp, and also uh, listening through streaming services. I have links to Apple Music and Spotify down below. So go check those out. Go give them a listen and uh, support some incredible artists that help make our show even better with their content. We love it. All right. It's now time to check the mailbag. Sweet. Go ahead. Uh, so this, I, I'm just going to start start reading this here. I, I don't fine. know what you guys, I'm kind of confused. I'm not sure what's going on. So it says, it's just mailbag. Uh, it says it's from Sweats, which we know. We've had his questions before. Yeah, we went over this. Yeah. Uh, but it, it starts out with, Dear Santa, uh, I've been a very good boy this year. What? A very, very good boy this year. Uh, what's weird is he the, the Y is backwards. Like he's like a three-year-old writing this. I don't know. I, I thought Sweats was like, you know, an older Did- gentleman. But uh, he, he goes on to say, I, I would like to ask for for Christmas bunion cream, nose hair trimmers, and baby powder. Uh, and Did then we? down below, it, it, it mentions P.S. Maybe a Hooters gift card. Wink. Did we There's get a his Christmas face. list? I think he just winked at Santa saying, like, hey, 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 hook, hook a brother up. I don't know. I don't know if he I don't would, think Santa uh, hands out Hooters gift cards, <laughs> number yeah, I one. Yeah, I think that puts you on the naughty list. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, that uh, yeah, first, I don't think Santa's going to hook you up with a Hooters gift card. Uh, 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 secondly, did we get, did we get, did he actually send us his, his wish list instead of, Instead That's of, what I'm thinking. A, instead of a mailbag question? So, uh, you know what that means. That probably oh. means that Santa has his question. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, uh, let me... Uh, might need to uh, <laughs> check in with Santa real quick and see if he uh, he uh, has... Uh, has, has, has those questions for us. It's just um, explain what's going on. Maybe he'll take them off the... Uh, off the naughty list for that. <laughs> um, oh, what's okay? Actually, I just got a text. It just says Santa's texting now. <laughs> yeah, Santa's. It's he's 2022. Pretty, I guess dude. he's very efficient. It's it's 2022, man. Like, fair, he's, fair, fair. He's texting. He's got the technology. Uh, he, he says check 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 outside. Uh, okay, all right. I didn't. I have my headphones on. I can't even hear the sleigh bells. I was stoked to like you know meet Santa, but. Rain, reindeer hoofs just just clop clop clopping on your roof you can't even hear them because you got that good noise canceling all right all right okay okay so uh, what i have here is the questions sweet <laughs> that's all it was it was literally just just a scrunched up he didn't even bother to wrap he must, it Santa must already like, been on his way here he's like i cannot believe that this happened <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, what's funny is he didn't even stick around to take the wish list. So sweats, um, you'll have You're to on remail that and get the address right this time. Don't get it mixed up because, you know, I'll, and maybe maybe scratch the Hooters gift card. Uh, so uh, yeah, here's a, let me uncrinkle this. He he really was annoyed by this situation apparently because he didn't even bother to wrap it nicely in an envelope. <laughs> Okay, here we are. This first question. Oh, comes from Sweats. Okay, cool. Thanks, Sweats. He also wrote that that explains the mix up. He, right. he must have mixed he wrote the letters, put the wrong ones in each and then in the envelope. He wrote the he he did the thing where Classic he Classic Sweats. He wrote the both letters at the same time, didn't pay attention which one was which. Well, he asked, sorry guys, been busy. Yeah, working on your Christmas wish list. I get it. <laughs> uh who is the biggest crap talker when gaming? He didn't say crap, by the way. Uh, when gaming, automatically on the naughty you. list, cursing in your Christmas letter. Cur- mm-hmm. That's why Santa was upset. That's why he, he there was just a crumpled piece of paper outside of my door. He just dropped it. Boy, but don't even bother sending your list in now, dude. Uh, okay, <laughs> who's the biggest crap talker when gaming? Out of the three of you, uh, scratch that two of you. Uh, and what level of toxicity do you rate each other's gaming style? If I can friendly fire, I will. GG boys, teabag, and move on to the next spot. Um, I I don't play a ton of multiplayer games. I mean, I do play very select few. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the main one, the one I play probably play the most is Warzone. And 
unfortunately, that's also this type of game that I get most heated in. <laughs> I was telling Adrian before the show, I was like, when I play Warzone, like I just I get so frustrated. And I think it's because I know what I need to do to be better. It's not even like a oh, I got killed. I watched the kill cam. I'm like, oh, if I would have done this, I would have like, no, like as it's happening, I'm like, I'm like, go left. And like, but instead, like instinctually, like I'm going right. I'm like, why am I doing this? Why? Like, and boom, I'm dead. I get so infuriated. So, uh, I, so in talking crap in that sense, like I, I get, I just get real heated. And so when I do finally take some people out, like I'm hooting and hollering and yelling at them. (laughs) Oh man. It's like, so um, Sit down, boy. To, yeah, to finally just like, I, if you were to rate me, I'm sure I'm like mellow on the scale compared to like <laughs> some people. I mean, you guys have all heard me talk. Like, I'm not, I'm not a JJ out there, so it's not going to be dirty, <laughs> nasty, you know, crap talking to people. But boy, I get stoked, and I'll, I'll, I'll yell at people all night. If again, if I get the kill, it doesn't happen often, but it does. Whew, it all comes out. All that pent up rage from getting killed comes out. <laughs> Um, what about you, Adrian? Do you have, uh, are, are you a big, uh, crab talker in multiplayer? Are you pretty like calm, cool, collected? Like you are just in everyday life. Most times it doesn't really get under my skin for, for much of anything when it comes to the, to gaming and multiplayer gaming and stuff like that. But when it comes to Mario party, I feel like I just, I turn into a different person, dude. Like I will, when you talk about play to win, I play to win, like, to the level where sometimes people legitimately get upset. Um, (laughs) Like, I I don't know what it is about Mario Party. It's it's been that way since, like, the originals came out. Whoever I play with, whether it's my brother or my friends or anybody, whoever, I am cutthroat to the core, you know? My, My toxicity levels, they... They minus the slurs, of course. They reached 2009, 2010 <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 levels, okay? That's where I'm oh, at when man. I play Mario Party. So if you're Oof. not playing to win, don't come over here. <laughs> but really, that's the only thing that gets me going like that. Most other games, like I'll be competitive, but you know, if I lose, A, I lost, you know? Yeah. But and I think the only other person, not only other person, I know a few people. But in recent memory, I think the only other person who shares that, like, that hunger is probably Eddie. Because Eddie gets really yeah. salty when he loses oh. at Mario Party. If you want to see him get real heated, was it the Halloween episode when we, we didn't do a show, but we played Mario Party instead? Yep. And I just went full Waluigi and just like. <laughs> and you screwed him over, dude. He was I, mad the rest of the night. So it was so mad. good. Yeah, you can go watch that. It's up on our YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, he gets pretty heated. I mean, you you guys both are getting pretty upset. But yeah, because I'm just like, I'm a wild card. And that game, I was just like, I could care less. Like, it's and it's a game of chance anyway. It's like, it's, yeah, there's skill. But in the end, it's like, who's getting the random stars, you know? And yeah, so, of course. <laughs> yeah. But I want to have the best chances as possible. So yeah. that's why you yeah. got to play to win. You got to use your noodle. Yeah, you guys are real intense, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, there's a reason you're the king of video games and still Resident Superstar. <laughs> I can oh, lose man. king of games. Resident Superstar, you're gonna have to you you're gonna have to come and take it. That's the only off, way it's leaving. Off your cold dead corpse. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, this next question also comes from Sweats. He asks, I'm not an achievement hunter, but what do you consider your greatest feat in gaming? Mine was a tie in getting 100% completion in Red Dead Redemption 1 or 100% completion in Viva Pinata. Don't knock it till you try it. Mine was... I'll, I'll say a recent one was when I 100% completed Cuphead. Um, now, I don't know if... Most of you out there probably have played Cuphead once or twice, so you know how hard it is. Um, in order to 100% it, you have to clear every boss stage and every run and gun stage. You cannot get hit. You have to do it in a certain amount of time and you have to get a certain amount of, of objectives cleared. So like you have to parry so many times, you have to use super so many times and you have to do that for everything. That includes the final boss. That includes the big boss before him, everything. So after and and that's the reason 
why I don't have much hair today is because of doing <laughs> that. But it is one of my proudest achievements. I know people are going to say, well, it's not Dark Souls. It's not this. It's not Sekiro. No. Have you played Cuphead's this hard. game? Cuphead's hard. I Cuphead, is, like... Cuphead is hard normally. Yeah, now try to play think... Cuphead without getting hit. <laughs> on the yeah, final on, boss on like easy mode i could barely beat like two bosses and i'm like right forget it like i i was like i like what this game's doing but it's not for me <laughs> i gave up I, I like to keep my hair uh, <laughs> yeah so that's kind of um, that that's one of my 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 most recent proudest ones and i platinum resil awesome. gun which is really hard too jeez uh that's insane um so I I don't know. I'm just not that kind of gamer. Like I don't really do that kind of stuff. Like I the only game I've ever uh platinumed is <laughs> Astrobot Playroom. Really? On PS5 on PS5. Is that In your whole PlayStation career ever. Yeah, that's the only game. I was supposed to I was supposed to platinum Death Stranding by the end of this year and I currently have uh 11 days to do that still you better get um, going on this break <laughs> uh that was gonna yeah platinum platinum that that's uh, probably not happening um keep in mind I, I you've been know. talking about doing this since what when did it come out you we well, were no, talking about I, this I, before I formally, the before director's cut came out uh i've i've always kind of talked about like well, yeah, when the when the original came out, I said I, I wanted to do that, but I didn't like put it on the board. I didn't put it on the board until it was the beginning of this year. It was like January. I'm like, right. by the end of this year, I'm gonna platinum the director's cut. <laughs> yeah, all right. And then I uh, use smash cut to like some text that says he did not, in fact, <laughs> get the platinum. Um, yeah, the only I mean, I 100. So is a weird thing. Ratchet and Clank, the new one for PS5. I also 100 percent it or. Yeah, I did, but I didn't get the platform platinum. Like I hundred percented like a bunch of levels, but there's more stuff besides just there's like certain challenges or like, like you should double back on it if you're stuff. that far so, already. I should, I should just finish it up. Like I was pretty close if I remember right to getting the platinum, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really, I'm not that kind of dude. Like I don't hundred percent things normally because it's like all right, I loved my experience and I'm done. Or if I really liked it, like I'll just play the game over again. But mm -hmm. the completionist aspect of me. Like, I have a completionist aspect because that's why I can never play open world games because I'll just play forever trying to 100% it. But that's that's the thing. I never do because I just spend 100 hours in it and never finish the game. And then I just move on to the next game. It has to be mm. worthy of it, right? Like, it can't just be any yeah. old game. It has to be something that when you are playing it, there's a switch. There's like a yay or nay. Like, yeah, this, this is so good that I'm going to go for everything or... Oh, this is okay. I'll just play it till the end. And yeah. when when that switch flips in in one in the one way, you have to go through with it to complete the if, experience. You have to get the if, platinum. If Metal Gear Solid, if any of those, if one, two, or three were playable on on PS5, then or PS4 or whatever, and had trophies, then I would probably have a platinum in that. But unfortunately, they are still after take being taken offline uh last year it's been over a year now uh they still have not returned to digital storefronts and now are unable to play. you know if you get the legacy collection you have a ps3 well yeah and i do have the i have the legacy collection but was there Those trophies, trophies on the ps3 yeah okay i didn't know has a platinum sure three added. has a platinum um I, and of course four does so something for you that. to think about I didn't realize that they added trophies on PS3. Mm -hmm. I knew it came to PS3. I just assumed like, oh, they're old games, so they didn't support trophies or something. No, like they're that, they're the cleaned up HD versions and all that. So they added all that stuff in. Yeah, there's trophies. Okay, all right. Well, maybe maybe I'll do that one day. There you right go. after I get the Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> never. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so Prince Lot comes in with the last question here, and they ask. What's an IP that would make a great pixelated platformer that doesn't exist? Mm. You got one? Um, so immediately what popped in my head was a game that's already a platformer, but it's not like a 2D pixelated platformer. And I 
think it would be, I think it would be a lot of fun. I mean, in the same way that Mario, you know, gets away with like their 3D versus 2D side scroller games, like they have they, they have different feels. Like it, it feels very much like new fresh gameplay. I I would love to see Crash Bandicoot side scroller 2D pixel even even if they went like an old like pixelated like I don't know 16 bit art style or something like just kind of like a fun arcade thing I don't know something like that would be fun I and again it's like all right it's already a platformer but heck I I don't know it would just add such a like even though it's taking away a dimension I feel like it would also add a like a whole new dimension to the game (laughs) like oh man like it'd be kind of cool um yeah, so that, that's that's what I was leaning towards was was a Crash Bandicoot. I want uh, that. Uh, what, what do they what do they call it? The not a rem- a D Master like they always like I, I love that whenever a new big game comes out. There's there's some guy on Twitter who always does that. Like he did like a he did like a Death Stranding D Master. He did like a Bloodborne D Master. Like it's just a video. It's not an actual game, but it's like mm-hmm. he, he makes these videos. Like yeah, g- give me like a Crash Bandicoot D Master where it's like two D side scroller. Be sick. I would want. You know what would be fun? I think Splatoon would be fun, just because of the way you you traverse in the environment, like being able to go from platform to platform. And granted, I, you know what? Actually, the campaign well, it, in that it, game it be... already has some of that element, but it would be okay. a two D, right? Because it would be sprites. Right. So, yeah, I could see it maybe running on like a like a GBA or something like that. Yeah. To try to get away yeah. With oh, that. Totally. yeah. I feel like it would be like it would be like a side game. It wouldn't have multiplayer, and it would just be yeah, it'd be like a little short story side thing, like mm-hmm. yeah, it'll look a two D side scroller world. That'd be awesome with the same weapons and stuff though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. It's like because it's such a fun, colorful world. Like it would look beautiful on like a Game Boy Color screen or something. Like yeah. That. Or even like if they you know modern day came out on Switch or whatever, just. Imagine on the OLED, like this 2D pixelated, like oh, Splatoon world. Oh, man. <laughs> Give it. Two, two and a half D. Yes. Like that HD, two and a half HD thing or whatever. Uh, there you go. That's it for the mailbag this week. Thank you so much for writing in. Even if you sent it to the wrong person, sweats, don't let that happen again. Uh, for for really your own sake, because if anything, you just kind of upset Santa. But um if you want to run it right in the mailbag, remember you can hit us up on DMs anywhere, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or join us over at supergamerboys.com slash discord to join our discord server where we are hanging out all throughout the week, talking about video games, talking about movies we're watching talking about what we're having for dinner. You never know. Uh, we have fun over there and, uh, yeah, come join the rest of the community. We have a fun little, fun little crew over there. All right, let's, get down to it it's now time for the nerdy nudes it's now time for the nerdy nudes beautiful that's one of those things i'm glad that i never have to do (laughs) one day (laughs) one day one day one day maybe i'll let you or jj host and i'll and i'll just be you know the co-host on the show oh Uh, man then you have to do nerdy nudes. Oh, and you have to do the outro. Oh man, I don't That's know if I can handle day. that. That I don't know if I can handle that. Like that gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Honestly, <laughs> uh, for um, I, uh, for Garrett Morling and uh, <laughs> like I'll I'll do the rest of the show no problem. But give me those two responsibilities. Oh, forget it. That's too much. <laughs> uh, this first news story comes to us from George Foster over at The Gamer. And they write, The Last of Us Part 3 is rumored to be in production at Naughty Dog. Ellie's journey could be continuing sooner than we thought. Last of Us Part 3 is reportedly already in development at Naughty Dog. Uh, Heads up, by association to the franchise, it might, like, tangentially spoil things. Like, I I just read that subline and I realized, like, oh, that might be a spoiler. Like, for all you people If you haven't played The Last of Us 2, get out! Yeah, or one, get out. Yeah, yeah. So 
because uh, yeah for all you know maybe she survived maybe she didn't like you there's no way to know without playing it so there you go <laughs> apparently she does uh, although the last of us part 2's release wasn't that long ago rumors have been swirling for some time about the, what Naughty Dog is up to next we already know about the faction sequel that's seemingly coming in 2023 but it's also been suggested that the studio's working on a brand new IP one that's seemingly fantasy themed it's now also being reported that the team is also working on the last of us part 3 this report comes courtesy of Twitter user Viewer Anon, who has previously leaked that Ashley Johnson would be playing Ellie's mother in HBO's adap adaptation of The Last of Us. Viewer Anon also previously leaked the existence of Crash Bandicoot 4, so they seem to have a pretty accurate track record when it comes to leaks. Uh, they Their actual tweet says, Well, I'm not watching anything, so... Wait, what? Well, I'm not watching anything, so Dr. Uckman... <laughs> Dr. Archman's next game is The Last of Us Part 3, which is currently in production at Naughty Dog. So that's what his tweet said uh, back on December 13th. After jokingly saying that they would drop a scoop if they didn't get an invite to the presser for HBO's adaptation, Viewer Anon tweeted the tweet that I just mentioned there. Uh, I've seen a lot of, should we trust this person from new people to the account? So various scoops I've had in the gaming adjacent space, I revealed a whole lot of The Last of Us show details. I uh, was the first to mention the existence of Crash Bandicoot 4. Um, that, that was this viewer and on going on and basically regaling you with their their uh, previous uh, kind of correct leaks there. So um, at this point, yeah, it's just a leak. There's no official announcement, but again, given the track, track record, record, it could be it could be legit. I think the main thing is that the treat the tweet very much is specific that. Neil Druckmann is working on Last of Us Part 3, kind of making me draw the conclusion that the other two projects, Factions and whatever the fantasy-themed IP that they could be working on, the new IP, are not really necessarily... I'm sure they're being overseen, quote-unquote, by Druckmann, but um, he's not obviously focusing a lot... He might not be it focusing on It doesn't have his direct attention. Yeah. So I guess let's get down to it and talk about how we feel about this. Um... I made my thoughts very clear, but I kind of want to hear more. Your th on, on, on Twitter, I did. I just said, please stop. Uh, I won't elaborate at this moment because I want to hear Adrian's thoughts. So <laughs> how do you feel about this? Getting to part three, so eh, possibly so soon. Like, I don't know. What do you what do you think is going to how, how does this flesh out here? Is this so I'm in a crossroads, right? I want this and I don't want this. I want this because I want to see the continuation of the story, of course like anybody would because one and two were absolute bangers and i would love to see the next steps in the journey however just like the article said we just got last of us part two you know and people are still digesting it they're still you know doing studies on it and everything as if it were as if it had just come out so i don't think we need to follow up that quickly um i think we should just stick with 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 factions being the the interstitial game or experience right now and then once the time is right then you can double back and come back because i would love to see naughty dog at this point take on a new ip um because they clearly have just they they've they've told me to my face in so many words that jack and daxter do not exist anymore we're not gonna ever see anything from them again <sighs> So if they're going to do this final or not final fantasy, this fantasy IP, ooh, a Naughty Dog Final Fantasy game. Anyway, uh mm -hmm. if they're going to do this new IP, then go ahead and do it. Don't don't sit on it, right? The way that I'm thinking about it is they should do this new IP and then come back later and finish or give us part 3 of The Last of Us either as a swan song for the ps5 or a launch title for ps6 i think either of those would be a good bombshell so that's kind of where i'm standing at on that on that front anyway yeah um and i think i i, I kind of agree with you yeah like i feel like it's way too soon for another one um and and yeah somebody i tweeted out like please stop and i think that was kind of reactionary. It was kind of like a quick, like, you know, is this a quick, quick take? You know, I didn't necessarily think a ton about it because initially I'm like, I, 
yeah, we just had one, and I mean, both games so far have ended with you know tied with a nice little bow, perfect, like we're done. And some, I mean, somehow they managed to make a second one, even after the first one seemed to end pretty, pretty well. Um, and then the second one does the same thing. It ends like, okay, yeah, we're good, we're done. Um, so in my mind, it's like, why take the chance a third, a third time? <laughs> why keep taking chances when you already have two classics here, two certified like top tier games? Um, and so, yeah, why take the chance when you have? Of the the chance to make a new IP, which we know they're already working on, um, and then B, all these IP that they have in their their po back pocket that they're just not even touching, like Jack and Daxter, or um, you know, who knows if we get uh, I don't necessarily want another Uncharted, but um, from them at least, and so soon with the way the the, the fourth one ended and everything, um, yeah, I don't know, I. His, but if it came later like you were saying if it ends up being end of the ps5 cycle which which honestly makes more sense like that makes a lot of sense like that's how that's how every game's been like the first one came out at the end of the ps3 second one came out at the end of the ps4 so if they're gearing up now and the plan is for this to come out in five six years and okay i can feel good about that but mm -hmm. yeah it's it just it just seems too soon to even be hearing about this. Like, and again, this is a rumor. This isn't even from Naughty Dog. So it's again, too soon maybe... for us to hear about it. If yeah. anybody, I want, if they're going to do this, I want Naughty Dog talking about it now because I want them to be right. in pre-production now. So it's done in yeah. the time frame that it needs to come out. Um, and then to your point earlier, if I'm going to trust anybody to say, hey, we have an idea for another game and we're going to go ahead and go for it. It's going to be Naughty Dog. Right. They. In yeah. oh God, the past 10 plus years, at least they have not they don't make garbage. Right. They, yeah. If I mean, they're going to they make something missed. they have an intent to, they're going to put their full talent behind it. So I yeah. trust them I don't, if they think they have I an get, idea yeah. for a third. Yeah, I don't I don't know why I have the skepticism because you're right. Like they haven't. They haven't really missed. Um, they're, they've not all been ten out of tens, but they haven't missed. Like they have not been garbage either. Like it's been they've been very good games. So yeah, I don't know why that there's that skepticism. I guess it's just or like that fear of that. Well, what's what if this is the one? What, what, what if it's the one time? What if they finally mess up? It's been a long time. They haven't made garbage. I like, mean, they're gonna. What look. if this is the one time? And so that's why it's like why ruin? Like why solely the name of The Last of Us when it's already like pretty pretty top tier right now you know statistically they're gonna have to have a miss at some point we don't know what is gonna be on this ip could come out and flop because everybody's like wait this isn't last of us wait this yeah. isn't uncharted it could be a whole big deal but a let's hope they never flop but b if they do let's hope that they learn from it and bring back whatever they need into the next title and take it like that I when you said that like they can't all be good like eventually they're gonna flop the first thing that popped in my head is like oh man what is gonna happen on the day when Supergiant makes a bad game like Adrian's gonna go in the deep dark depression <laughs> he's gonna crawl in a hole never come I'm gonna out. delete like, my Twitter account <laughs> I'm not gonna I be on like... any any podcast episodes <laughs> book club is canceled that month <laughs> like what i'm gonna go what buy a, a jar a, tar, a pint of ice cream turn all the lights <laughs> oh, off and just sit there oh man that's so sad yeah I was but that day won't like, come that day is nowhere near okay hades I mean, 2 it was, already it was your words already another 9 to 10 out of 10 mark my words all right Put it, put it on the board, Kajoma. Put it on the board, Kajoma. <laughs> put it on the board. Hades um, 2 will at least be, a majority of reviews will be a 9. We will see. We will see. I believe you, because they. you're right. They only, But just based off of your statement, you just made a few moments ago, eventually they have to miss. And it's they like, will. in my head, I'm like, shoot. And, and like, I, what? when that day comes, that's, I'm going to have to face it. But as of right now. Sad, sad day. <laughs> untouchable. <laughs> Same deal with Naughty Dog. All right. This next story comes to us from 
Mariella Moon over at Engadget, and they write, Death Stranding will get a movie adaptation. Um, I don't know why I went with Engadget instead of Variety, since Variety is the one who originally broke the, the news. But Kojima Productions is working with LA-based Hammerstone Studios to develop a movie adaptation of Death Stranding. Uh, that's right, they're turning the video game movie into just a movie. Um, <laughs> that's what Adrian kind of mentioned before. He's like, isn't this just already It's a already movie? a movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. Um, the 2019 action game already provides quite a cinematic experience with lengthy cutscenes and dramatic expositions, which is probably part of the reason why they aren't already adapting its story to, into film. According to Variety, the movie will introduce new elements and characters into the death stranding world so we will see something fresh at the very least even if they don't create a brand new story for the big screen the game is set in an apocalyptic, ver apocalyptic version of the united states where invisible creature we know what death stranding is we don't need to we don't need to read this um hideo kojima will serve as the film's executive producer along with hammerstone co-founder alex Le uh which apparently is i'm looking at movies that Hammerstone and this uh, Alex have done um, and that includes uh, Barbarian which is like a new horror movie that was supposed to be apparently just incredible. I've heard great things about um, it. So they did that. They did Bill and Ted Face the Music. Uh, that's, they did a couple other movies I've never heard of before. Um, so they're currently working, working on a movie called Sympathy for the Devil featuring Nicolas Cage and Joel Kinnaman. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, they at least have one movie on there that I know I've heard incredible things about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Alex here goes on. We are thrilled and honored to have the opportunity to partner with brilliant and iconic Hideo Kojima on his first film adaptation. Unlike other big budget tentpole video game adaptations, this will be something far more intimate and grounded. Our goal is to redefine what a video game adaptation could be when you have creative and artistic freedom. This film would be an authentic Hideo Kojima production. That statement, even though it came from Alex, sounded like it was written by Hideo Kojima himself. <laughs> the way that he kind of <laughs> says, like, uh, it will be unlike anything that we've ever done before. We're going to redefine. Like, it just sounds like very Kojima-esque, like, Kojima wrote a script for Alex to, to read. Um, so this is right on the heels of Death Stranding 2 getting announced at the Game Awards uh, with Norman Reedus and Leia Saido uh, reprising their roles, as well as Elle Fanning um, joining in, as well as a couple others that are not listed in this article. So, Adrian, um, I am stoked out of my mind, obviously. Uh, we heard last year that they're, or earlier this year, I think it was, they were opening that studio in LA that was supposed right. to be geared more towards movies, TV shows, stuff like that. Um, they're finally putting it to use, it seems like. Uh, I would like to see... I would... They mentioned they're going to bring in new characters and new elements, stuff like that. I would love it if they... Like... Yeah, if most of the characters weren't even in the movie. Honestly. Well we talked like, about I it before the show. I, yeah, I would love it if it's like another, just another story in the world, like not connected to them at all. Like I don't know. Like I think it'd be kind of cool. I don't know what, yeah, what that means. But then I, I mentioned earlier, I said there's there's a couple universal figures in the story that you kind of have to. If they're not in it, they need to be like mentioned just because of the contributions they've made to society at all, right? What if this is yeah. about like another porter that Sam ex in, inspired or something like that? Who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think even before the show, I had mentioned, like, okay, yeah, it could be even something that tying Death Stranding 1 to Death Stranding 2, like an in between kind of film. But what just popped my head now is, like, yeah, what if it is, though, just like a complete separate side story that's like, that isn't connected to anything? What if it is just like, it, it is about a porter, but, you know, it's not a porter that has, a, um, it's not a repatriate, like, like, uh, like Norman Reed is like he has nothing special about him. He's just a porter trying to deliver a package, and you know maybe he comes across like uh, uh, like a heart man or something like that, or or like uh, maybe like Mama or something like that. Like maybe so it's like maybe it is like taking place at the same time or a little before. But I don't know. Like I I would like even though it'd be 
freaking cool to have the whole cast back together and basically get Test Stranding on T as a movie. Uh, I also think it would be awesome if it was just like, hey, it takes place in the world, but maybe it doesn't involve anything. It doesn't necessarily, it just adds more to the lore of the world more than it adds to the character development of the characters in the current game kind of thing, if that makes sense. I don't know. I think I, I'd be down for that. As just a huge Death that. Stranding fan, as a huge Death Stranding fan, I'd be down with any story. Kind of like I was gonna say, anything me, they make, you're gonna go see. So yeah, it, it could be like yeah, <laughs> give me like all the the like the Star Wars vision stuff that they've been doing. That's like non-canon even. Just like give me any story from that world. That doesn't have to be canon. I don't care. Like give me something from like that world <laughs> with characters and stuff. That'd be sick. Um, but uh, yeah, I so you, you do you think though? Are, are you feeling like it, it could be more of a sequel, a prequel, take place at the same time? Like what? what how, what are you feeling that they might do? I would kind of dig it like you were saying if it was an anthology where it was a series of of shorts of different areas of, of the United States that, you know, people are surviving in and kind of the struggles they're going to and hearing the information that there might be somebody coming who can hook everything up. I think that would be interesting. Those conversations between people who live in those areas would be interesting to to hear them debate about or to hear them you know freak out or something like that so i'm game or as as tight as uh um so my my speculation for and i haven't really shared this on the show for death Stranding 2 i am starting to wonder if you're gonna play as fragile in the new game um, i mean it's definitely a possibility like, so, since she's like she's been the main person on the posters like they came out with a with a sam porter bridges poster but there's like like leia sado uh, fragile has like two or three posters of her like like that they've made like with like the image of like the logo and all this stuff mm-hmm. like okay she seems to be and she's like the main character in the trailer i have a feeling that she's going to be the main character of two you might even play mainly as her um, especially with old Sam, maybe he's too old to do his adventures again, you know, <laughs> um, like kind of reminds me of old snake. Uh, Granddad can't come out anymore. He can't deliver packages <laughs> anymore. Honey, you got to go for him. So, so with a movie coming up, like what if it's even telling just more of her story? Like if it comes out around the same time or even before, who knows, like who knows when this could come out, but what if it's telling more about the story of, of fragile express, like maybe how she inherited it from her father or, Maybe it is like post Death Stranding 1 and it's like her like, okay, like transitioning it from what it is in Death Stranding 1 to, I mean, we don't know what it is in Death Stranding 2, but it doesn't seem like, like she doesn't, she's not wearing a suit with with a fragile logo, like nothing, like there's no fragile, so it either is completely dissolved or changes in some way, like there's something that goes on, so maybe it's that story even, like again, tying the two between, but it's not focusing on Sam. It's focusing more on Leia's story. Since she's going to be the main character, like, oh, it's built flesh out her character more. I don't know. I think we'll that'd have be to wait and cool. see. We will have to wait and see. I'm excited. I know it's like everyone's probably sick and tired of Death Stranding talk because we talked about it yet last week at the Game Awards, but oh, I love it. I love it so much. But you're not done. We're talking about one more thing. It's not Death Stranding, but possibly more Kojima adjacent news. This article yes, comes from. Yes, please. Uh, this article comes from Zarmena Khan over at PlayStationLifestyle.net, and uh, Blue Point teases a new game with their holiday card. So PlayStation recently shared holiday greetings cards from a uh, a number of first-party studios and third-party partners over on the PlayStation blog, including one from Blue Point Games that appears to be teasing its new project. The developer has stayed out of the limelight since its acquisition by Sony, and all we've had confirmation of thus far is that Bluepoint is working on original content. Uh, In the image above, via PS blog, the shield represents Demon Souls' PS5 remake, the axe represents Bluepoint's assistance on the God of War Ragnarok, and the sword represents Shadow of Colossus remake. Fans are left guessing what's inside the fourth unopened box. Our next project we're working on uh, original content right now, Blue Point told IGN back in September 2021. We can't talk about what that is, but that's the next step in the evolution for us. 
Uh, despite Blue Point confirming it's working on something original, fans haven't stopped hoping and praying for the long rumored Bloodborne remake. Rumor has it that the studio is working hey, on I'm Bloodborne 2, but we advise not getting your hopes up because this one is, is one of those rumors that has no legs but continues to swirl anyway. So they they have said that they're working on original content, but they they could have multiple teams working on stuff, right? They could be working on two two projects at once, right? So That's if you look at this possible. image, if you look at this image, the Demon Soul Shield comes out of a green kind of plaid colored box. It's like, you know, green with like some lighter green stripes on it. Kratos Axe, it's a tall red and white striped box. Uh, and the Shadow of the Colossus remake is a blue box featuring uh, kind of diamonds on it, white diamonds. The fourth box, it is a plain Jane, looks like just brown cardboard box, you know, something you'd see possibly somebody hiding um, in one of those maybe yeah so possibly from a franchise known as metal gear solid that's right while the internet is blowing up thinking it's a bloodborne remake i'm doing the real detective work and uh looking in probably probably, probably looking a little too too closely at this and over analyzing it but that's a plain jane cardboard box i've ever done seen one and uh if i remember correctly that's kind of the main, uh, that's like a main piece of equipment in the Metal Gear Solid games. I think this is, I, I want to think this is a Metal Gear please, Solid remake. Please. That, oh. that has been rumored for so long. Blue point, I'm begging you. And even right before the Game Awards, there was a big leak that came out that apparently uh, there was an announcement coming soon. And I mean, and, and the leak even said, announcement coming soon for Metal Gear Solid Remake. It's not at the Game Awards. They were very explicit, explicit in the leak. Don't expect it to see at the Game Awards, but it's coming soon. And so with them dropping this, being at a Christmas card, you know, happy holidays. I am hoping and praying that I wake up <laughs> December 25th to an, a tweet from Blue Point saying, here's our next game. And it's just the box is open. And there's like a ration in there or something. Like that's what I want to see. I, I want it. Uh, I want it to pop open, and it's like the little Metal Gear. What's his name from Metal Gear Solid Four? Like that's what I want to see. Like, not, or I guess that wouldn't make sense because it has to be the first one. The mini raid. Um, I don't think that. Yeah, but but now that I think of it, like it doesn't make sense because if they're remaking the first one, they wouldn't have mini ray in there. Um, but yeah, so like I want to see like a ration or I don't know, like anything. If you do hell, a really uh, high res ration. Like kind of sticking yeah. out of the box, yeah. I think, I think that'll go. That'll go over. Oh man, that would be sick. Uh, so that's my speculation. While the internet is again ablaze with Bloodborne, I don't know why people are so on this Bloodborne remake thing. Bloodborne, not a good game. No one likes that game. No one it's actually so, really likes. That well, game, the weird think. thing about it is, is people have been incessantly asking for this for years. How come they don't just? put a couple i mean granted it's 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 not as easy as it looks of course but why wouldn't they just update the code to make it run in 60 i don't understand what's such a big deal about yeah. them not being able to do that at this point i mean what they're yeah what what the fans are asking for for bloodborne is just an update they just need to put out a patch with 60 fps like that's what people are asking for mainly it's like let's get make it 60 fps like that doesn't that doesn't require a full remake that just requires uh <laughs> from software just clicking a I know it's harder than that, but just turning like some knobs putting, and, and cranking some levers putting, and putting out a patch like that's right. not a full game. That's not full game worthy for 60 FPS. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll wait and see. Hopefully, hopefully we hear something at Christmas, but we Please. will have to just wait and see. Please be Metal Gear Solid Remake. Please be Metal Gear Solid Remake. <sighs> All right. That's it for the Nerdy News this week. It is now time for our Patreon ad. This is the part of the show where I tell you to go over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys. Support us over there. That's right. You can go over there. It's worth starting at just a buck a month. One dollar. And you get episodes early and ad free. You get episodes from this show. You get our Super Gamer Book Club episodes. And uh, two months early on those bo uh, bad boys. Um, so just two days. 
And uh, yeah, uh, that support helps us tremendously. Five bucks and up, you can get show notes early uh, so you can know what we're going to be talking about on the show. And you can also... Um, Leave your own questions, comments, concerns, thoughts right on the show the show docs. So that way, while we're doing the show, I can actually see those, read them off on the show. It's a lot of fun. Uh, people don't do it that often. Every once in a while, they do. And it's always a nice surprise. It's always exciting. So if you ever, like, pop in there on the show notes and, uh, and see, like, a news story we're going to be talking about and you have your own thoughts on it, go ahead and leave it there. That's what you can do with the five bucks a month. We'll read your thoughts and opinions on the air as uh, as, as they fit in there. Um, 10 bucks a month, you can get shout outs on the show and you can be, uh, become a sponsor just like, uh, our fantastic sponsors that we have. And then also the big top dog tier, we got 15 bucks a month. You can be a super gamer producer, Patreon producer, where you can pitch segments, be our boss. Uh, and, uh, yeah, overall just have a, have a good time just laughing at us when we do your crazy bits and stuff. <laughs> we haven't had a we haven't had a, a, a new recommended uh, show show segment in a while, but uh, boy, when we do have them, it, it, it's a lot of fun. We we really do enjoy at least giving them a shot. Give we give it the old college try uh, until we have to tragically cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> that that will forever live in infamy. I don't think we'll ever forget the fact that we had to cancel very abruptly a segment that went absolutely a like we just take it as a lesson yeah don't pitch (laughs) think think before you pitch how about that think before you pitch i think it's (laughs) know your presenters yeah remember that jj is also a co-host here um (laughs) you can also subscribe over on twitch twitch.tv slash the super gamer boys uh if you have Amazon Prime, you have Prime Gaming, which gives you a free sub every single month. Doesn't cost you anything. We get five bucks. So please think about throwing it our way. We would very much appreciate it. Uh, And then last but not least, W.GG. We are uh, partners with them, where if you go over to W.GG, buy some sweet, sweet energy drink with that Neuro Factor in there. Help, Help your brain do good things. Help your brain work good. You know, I'm, I, I need some right now to help me talk. Uh, you can use our code SGB. You get 10% off and it helps support the show. We get kicked back financially. They give us money. They give us actual money when you buy things from there and use our code. So please go buy things because the more you buy, the more money they give me. Uh, and there's a limit. To, they, they won't give you your money until you hit a certain limit and right now they have money that I can't get so, so go buy some energy so you can support the show we need some uh, some of that sweet sweet cash so we can keep making cool stuff for you guys buying equipment we need buying games we need whatever it might be we want to make sure we're making the top t- quality content and that means supporting us over getting that top quality energy drink that's right gluten free sugar free uh, no crash and like I said before features that narrow factor that helps your your brain just the synapses fire on all cylinders and uh, do good work it helps me I drink some today actually so go check it out w.gg all right that's it for the ad now let's get back to the show All right, Adrian, this is a part of the show where I ask you, what's your plan? So I have been carrying on with uh, Ratchet and Clank. Been doing some uh, just clean up here in, in all the realms that I've been to or um, rifts that I've been into different worlds. And man, I know I gushed about it last week, but one thing I don't know if I pointed out very well or that I didn't, you know, note to stick out is this game is so well animated. Hmm. Just the the way that enemies move, the way that characters move in cutscenes, it's all so fluid and it works together and it's just it's it's such a good I mean, A it's a, such a good game, but B just the attention to detail with things like that. Their animation team was, I mean, it must have been a bunch of vets or really, really talented folks because it's like next level stuff how good that animation is. Especially when you play it in like, uh, in, in a performance mode or 60 frames a second mode. Oh, yeah. oh, baby. It's insane. So shout out to them for that one. 
Um, I've been playing that one. And then I just recently started brushing up on old Kingdom Hearts, uh, getting ready for Book Club next week. So Heck yeah. it, it's going to be interesting because uh, you play the uh, HD remix, the 1.5, and I'm playing the original. So we get oh, to compare okay. notes and see uh, what you experienced versus what I believe Angel and I experienced. So we'll see yeah, how that goes. I think you guys are both playing the original. I'm curious mm-hmm. what, uh, what KK Ryder will be playing, too. Will he do yeah. the remix or will he go for the original or what? But, yeah, it'll be fun to kind of compare notes. Mm-hmm. What you playing? Uh, well, just Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> As I said, uh, I take that back. I played a little bit more God of War, uh, but I just want to touch on Kingdom Hearts real quick. Uh, <laughs> fun little story. Uh, I'll probably talk about this on the uh, book club, but it's kind of a little, little teaser. If you want to hear more of my thoughts, I got stuck at this part of the game. It was very late at night. And uh, I was like ready to throw my controller through the freaking window. Like I was getting like, pissed off like uh and it was like i don't know yeah it's like one or two in the morning and i like texted adrian thinking his phone was on silent like he was not gonna answer me um and initially he didn't that's the thing it was like i texted you at like one i think it was like an hour later it's like at two you finally he responded i was like oh no i woke adrian up i feel so bad i thought his phone was on silent um but nah, uh, i think i had just got up to go pee or something yeah but man i uh I got this part at the end because I finished it, as I mentioned earlier in the episode here. Um, poof. It, it was a boss fight that Adrian was like, oh, yeah, he shouldn't be that hard, especially with what level I was at. But for whatever reason, like I was just beating my head against the wall. It was so horrible um, until I realized like just it all came down to how I was playing the game. Uh, I was very much playing it like hack and slash like because that's how kind of I played the whole game. I was just like, I had a I, the way I built my character out and leveled up. Like I could just basically magic. Just like, who needs it? Yeah, who needs it? I very. I think the only time I used magic was to heal. Like I healed myself oh. every once in a while. I never used. I'm trying to think. The only spells, the only magic I used, yeah, was it was Kira, and uh, every once in a while the is it arrow or whatever the one that for for speed it's. Uh, speed and uh, it makes damage do like less it, it's like attacks do less damage on you right um, that was it so I just like would full throttle go like <laughs> ram into enemies uh. and destroy kill them very quickly and then this one boss is like nope not today <laughs> <laughs> and it sucks it's time so to bad. really play so I had to back off and pretty, I was telling Adrian, I was like, I kind of had to play it like a, like Elden Ring or like a, like a from software game, a souls, souls born game where you go and get a couple hits and you back off. Let there's one attack in particular that was just like boning me every time. So like back off, <laughs> let it, let him trigger, trigger that attack. All right. He's done. I know he's not going to do it for a little bit. Go in there. Whack, 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 whack. Okay. Back off trigger that attack okay yep i'm good because oh man it sucked so if you want to hear more about my kingdom hearts my overall thoughts of the game um and more about that battle i'm sure you'll hear hear about it over on the patreon which is coming out next friday um but yeah it it was a game it was a game that i played and i i will i will let the public know i'm looking forward to future games uh, not that's to what i like my, to hear not to spoil my thoughts at all on on the first one uh, again if you want to hear my thoughts on um, kingdom hearts specifically that first game uh come listen on patreon but uh i am very excited for future games at this point which i did not think would happen i was very surprised <laughs> <laughs> uh man that does my heart good <laughs> i knew you would, i knew you'd like that i mean uh. i it's uh, yeah, you got me to finally play it. It's been years, years in the making. You finally did it. Congratulations. You can you can rest easy now, Adrian. You can you can just uh, go back to wherever where where you came from. You, you can go back to your world now. No. <laughs> All right. You're well, like I'm a, just hopping my gummy ship. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a celestial being from another world coming to bless, <laughs> my work bless me here with is Kingdom done, Hearts. Done, done. <laughs> Uh, all right well that is it for this week thank you all so much for listening to our show we appreciate it uh all you who listen on podcast services and over at youtube.com slash super gamer boys uh if you love what we do and want to support us go over to patreon.com slash super gamer boys support us like i said earlier starting us a buck a month get episodes early and ad free like this show and 
that Kingdom Hearts episode. You'll get that too much, too, too, too much, two months <laughs> early before everyone else. Otherwise, I'll have to wait till, heck, yeah, you have to wait till February before you can hear that. That's so long away. That's so far. Uh, support us now at Patreon for just a dollar. You can hear me talk about Kingdom Hearts. Um, SGBstore.com. You can support us over there and uh, get some sweet, sweet merch. We got T-shirts. We got coffee mugs. Uh, I think... I think today might have been the deadline for buying merch if you want stuff for Christmas. So if you pour, if you're listening live on 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 Twitch, or you get the Patreon episodes, then you are in luck. You could probably just get, give whoever get, it is an IOU. You're fine. Otherwise, otherwise, it'll be a sweet New Year's gift for that friend of yours. <laughs> um, you can also support us by going over to w.gg. Use our code SGB. Remember, you get ten percent off. And it helps financially support the show as well. We get a little cut of that. Rate and review us where you can over on podcast services. Give us a thumbs up over on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. It's incredible how many of you watch our show and are not subscribed. Uh, it's like 80% of you or 90. Wow. It's, it's, it's a large percentage. It's incredible. I'm like, oh, sick. We got 40 views on this thing. And it's like, why are like 85% of you not subscribed? So please go subscribe. Um, shout out to Jack Sorach and Yate for allowing us to use their music on our show. You can find them over on Apple Music and Spotify. Links in the show description below. And you can find us during the week at SuperGamerBoys.com, Twitter and Instagram at SuperGamerBoys. And you can find me at Twitter and Instagram uh, at G Morlang. Adrian, where can they find you at? You can find me any and everywhere at Homeboy. And JJ, you can find him scraping at the ice work. off of his... Yeah, at work, scraping the ice off his off his off his car uh, <laughs> during their uh, the winter winter uh, tundra. What's it? What's it called? No, there's a what's the thing in the Midwest? Oh, the polar vortex that they have. There you go. It goes to the Midwest. That's, that's an actual thing. The one like we'd get it in Wisconsin when we lived there. Yeah, it's some. I, I some want nothing wind. to do with it. It's some wind that comes from down south, and by the time it gets to the Midwest, it turns into a polar vortex. It basically, it's basically a giant hurricane that turns changes from a hurricane to just a giant snowstorm. <laughs> nope, um, it doesn't. It doesn't destroy homes like a hurricane does, but it does destroy it's still your soul. cold. And, and, yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's all I got for the show this week. Uh, Adrian, take it away. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging with us for another week. And of course, thank you so much for all your support throughout this year of 2022. We couldn't have made it here without you. We appreciate everybody who came aboard on this crazy train this year and everybody who's been here since day one. We're wishing you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a safe, happy, and healthy new year from myself, Adrian Homeboy Holmes. And from Garrett, the Colonel Morlang, and not from J.J. Purdom because he's not here. For the final time in 2022, we are the Super Gamer Boys. And we'll catch you on the Flippity Flop. Whew. Time to go to bed. Did it. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> <laughs>